On our agenda today, the word clock. It's going to be a little technical, and I am going to do my darndest to keep it understandable. So if, if you're expecting a big technical explanation, you're not going to get it. I'm going to do my best to, to make this uh, easy. So Peter in London, England writes, Paul, uh, please explain the importance of a word clock. Is it better to use an external word clock relative to an internal one? This is a hotly debated subject. As audiophiles, we understand that you can spend a lot of money buying an external rubidium atomic clock that keeps incredibly accurate time. I mean, we're talking down to silliness in, in accuracy. And that is said to sound better than a less than rubidium clock inside of a DAC. So let's back up a sec and find out what a word clock is. In a typical PCM DAC, you have a number of clocks. There's a master clock, which kind of runs the whole show. And then there's a, um, oh, there's an, well, I, I tr I'm going to try and keep this as non-technical as I can. Ted, Ted Smith, our, our, digital, our digital genius, could do a much better job than I. But Ted's in Seattle, and Paul's here in Boulder, so <laughs> yeah, get me, right? The word clock uh, clocks in words. Okay, so let, let's, let's take, what is a word? We break digital words into groupings, okay? So a digital word is a number of bits, and the number of bits is dependent on the frame size. So you've heard of 16 bits, and you've heard of 18, 20, 24, 32, right? Those determine the length of a word, and that word is determining a numeric value assigned to the digital uh, assigned to eventually what's going to become the output voltage. So in its simplest form, you, you have, you know, here, here's our sine wave is going up and down like that. And the, our digital system is taking a snapshot here, 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 millions of times in a, in a second, okay? Um, and it's just, it's just going very, very quickly. And every time, well, not millions of times a second because we're running at 44,000 times a second or 192,000 times a second. But you get the idea. Very quick. Quicker than you can blink an eye. And at each snapshot, we're recording how high the voltage is going on our sine wave. And we are converting that to a digital number. Those numbers are contained within a word. So if I have a 24-bit word, there are 24 up and down bits that describe the number which is now describing the level of voltage. The higher the number, the higher the voltage. Okay, that's basically PCM, pulse code modulation. That's what we're doing here. And then the reverse of it, when we run it through a DAC, we're spitting a group of numbers into our DAC, and those numbers are then reconverted back to a hopefully an exact copy of where this point is in voltage. Oh, that's my little watch. Um, that gives us our sine wave back, and we hear music. So the word clock is a device that keeps each word in time. So, and what you want is that word clock to be as identical to the original word clock that we recorded it on and duplicated in the playback device, which is the DAC. So it's a very important component in our DAC. It's critical. If, if the word clock gets off, all kinds of, of havoc uh, happen. And even little bits like jitter uh, that we do here and, and changes in those uh, timing parameters make a big difference in the way things sound. So you want that word clock to be as accurate as you can. In our DACs, we spend a great deal of money on, on extremely accurate parts. But, and, and this is something that I learned from, from Ted Smith, the accuracy is only important in the short term. OK, 
okay? Not the long term. So we don't care if a clock is accurate over a day or two days, which is what scientists and engineers are concerned with when they have rubidium clocks and these atomic clocks. We want to know over years and years and years that that timing is absolutely accurate from one year to the next, from 10 years to 20 years. But that doesn't matter uh, as long as if it drifts slowly over a period of a day or so, you would never hear the difference. If it's moving within a, a time period that we could hear during a CD or whatever, that's a disaster. But long-term impacts of timing don't matter to clocks. And the advantage to an external clock is that here you can spend all your money on these long-term accuracy clocks, which really are rather meaningless in terms of, of digital audio. So you can spend a lot of money on these external clocks, and while we may hear a difference and say that that difference is better, it's not because that's more accurate. It's not because that word clock has long-term accuracy. That's not what you're hearing. It could be because they've paid more attention to any number of things, but not because of that. So in general, I would avoid external word clocks and their expense. I would put my money more into finding a DAC that is well built and thought out and voiced. And I think you'll be much better off if you do that. I hope that answered your question. And thank you for asking it. Bye-bye.